scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If you can trust a man that is mundane and can change in a moment, I can like you today and hate you tomorrow. And if you ask me why, I will say it's my choice. Is that true? I can hate you tomorrow and like you the next tomorrow. When you put your arm, your strength on men, it is so unreliable. The best of any man can change overnight. I can promise to give you more and say I can't remember. And just because my memory failed me, you will be punished. But the Bible says this word has been tried seven times. Listen carefully. It's not just a book that makes people spiritual. It's more than that. This is a compendium of the mind of Christ. Listen carefully. The Bible is a compendium of the ways of God. This is the ancient secret of an unbeatable life. The ancient secret behind strange results. Those who can be foolish enough, foolish enough, childlike enough, Brothers and sisters, this is the book that turns a poor man into levels of stupendous wealth. This is the book that turns a sinner and makes he a man of God out of him. Listen to me. This is the book that turns a man who cannot pay a rent of 10,000 to now own an estate. This is a book that can make a confused young man not knowing what to do with his life to become one who will govern kings and nations. This book has led many. We are not the first to hold it. There are many ancient hands that held this book. They were stupid enough to read everything there. And they believed God. They believed him. That's the point. It's not just reading it. They saw it. And they believed. And God performed wonders in and through their life. Today we have come in the midst of history. We are not starting anything new. We just have followed them who through faith and patience. When they taught us, they taught us to trust the word. And so we believe the word. Listen, it may not yet look like everything is appearing. But let me tell you the truth. Your destiny is too small to make the word of God fail for the first time. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. God used this word to humble the pride of wicked kings who were, their confidence were built upon divinations that had been tried for a long time. Yet the word of God brought them to their knees. If I trust any other thing in life and I do not trust the word of God, I'm a foolish man. Praise the Lord. This is the secret. I have a name that I call the Bible. I don't call it the Bible. It is my roadmap to accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. I study the Bible like an archaeologist, like someone who has lost a treasure and is looking for it. I keep saying it that the secret to the future is in the past. When you can go behind, the ancient part is not the part of a nomination. The ancient part is a part where you open. What did Jacob see? What did the psalmist see? And if the spirit of revelation opens your eyes to see it, 
Ah, brothers and sisters, you create your own reality and walk in it as if Satan does not exist. This is what makes those who don't understand these mysteries. They think that, you know, when men of God talk like this, they are arrogant. Your reality is based on what your eyes have seen. You must believe this. Your reality is based on what your eyes have seen. It is important for you to understand. Please let me have your attention. It is very important. There is nothing that is built by magic. There is nothing that is built by gimmicks. This is it. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever see Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word, I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your words, and I will forever sing your praise. Listen, if I ask you to stand up now and I tell you what is the basis of your confidence, somebody will say, My father is coming out for election, and some person in presidency promised him that this turn is his turn to eat. That is complete nonsense. It's human beings that vote somebody in and out and they can change their minds overnight. Another person will say his brother is the manager of XYZ and because he's sitting on money he will bless him. Hear what the Bible says. He says for by the arm of flesh. Did you hear that? By the arm of flesh shall no man prevail no man prevail do you know I have become addicted to this book it's not because I'm a preacher Jesus gave a parable I did not understand for many years he said the kingdom is like a man who is looking for a treasure the treasure is missing and then he lights a candle and goes around the room. The treasure is not the word. The treasure is the result you are looking for. But he tells you how to look for it. You light the candle. You carry an empty candle. You, you keep roaming around. An empty candle is a Bible you brought from Zondavan. And you drop. That's an empty candle. But when the illumination of the spirit is upon it. You carry it and move around. When you find it. It comes life to you. Then you communicate a dimension of results. That will dumbfound principalities and powers. Let me tell you. Don't ever doubt a man whose confidence is based on something he has caught in the word. You will be angry forever. You will dream forever. Nah. Anything that is not a derivative of the word. I don't trust it. Because I don't have control over it. The Bible says he upholds all things. That includes my destiny. He upholds all things. By the word of his power. We need to be a confident people. Listen, not just believers, confident people. A depth of conviction and persuasion that is brought about by this. The illumination of the spirit upon this word. So you search for it. Crime in scriptures is not just, it's not the key to understand the word. That's not just how it works. Many of us have memory of scripture, which is not bad in itself. 
except for the fact that it has no ability to empower you just like that. It's like carrying granite seed and chucking it in your pocket. Do you have a harvest? Will it grow, sir? The word is the seed. That's what Jesus said. The soil is your heart. The rain is the Holy Spirit. You can plant a seed and dry season will kill it into nothing. The seed is not wrong, but the anointing. You see that? The rain that comes upon the seed. Brothers and sisters, please, I want you to pay attention. For every time God gives us the privilege to converge like this, it is not the advancement of a man's agenda. It is the progression of your accessing the mysteries that will cause you to command dominion. Let me tell you something. There is a dimension of light that we are going to project to the world that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Yes. A dimension of light. Young people will rise up with a level of strange prosperity that people will say, no, no, no. Are these guys scammers? Are they fraudsters? We say, no. We found an ancient secret that can allow men to be blessed and focus on their assignment. You see that? You will rise with a strange level of the anointing that will make even herbalists to wonder and say, I'm a herbalist, but this is strange. It will happen. I am an archaeologist. I search it. I don't read the Bible to finish it. I read the Bible to find <laughs> what I'm looking for. And sometimes you can find one verse and stay there. That's where the gold is. So if you are, all you are doing is just to finish. I read Psalms 5 today. You came close to the gold mine. And carelessness took you away. And you go somewhere. It is scripture. But it's not the word of God. The word of God is that part of scripture that gives you life. So many people brag religiously. I started studying the Bible by January and now I'm in Revelations 22. Call the person and say, how many treasures did you find? Even one. One! The only thing they find is an accolade that I searched the scripture. But someone will come with an honest heart and open one scripture. You heard what that gentleman said? He used the way, the truth, the life. Alone. Imagine what else we can find. I've shared with you my vision years ago when I was caught up in the spirit and I saw a big gate and that gate was made of small, small doors. You know, they were opening and closing and light was emitting from every one of them. And then I kept looking and I noticed it was zoomed to me and I saw scripture written on every door. And the doors were opening and closing and I was asking the Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord said, every time you catch a revelation, the light component that is the performer of that revelation anything you claim you have caught and you cannot bring it to the scene is a lie you have not gotten it yet please pray and say lord by your mercy open my eyes today this kind of prayer you must add the mercy of god in it because what else will you say by what lord i cry by your mercy Open my eyes to see. You have spoken great things, but until my eyes see it, there is no possession. It says, as far as your eyes can see. Are we praying? Open my eyes. Show me where the anointing for the next level is. Open my eyes. Show me where the key to my lifting is. Open my eyes. Show me where the river is in the desert. Open my eyes. Oh God, many people will be hearing many things, but show me my own. And the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord has always been around. The word of the Lord came. Let my word come. The word of the Lord came.
Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about the mercy of God. Every time you want to access the spirit of revelation, ask the Lord to release it by his mercy. There is no known formula I know for receiving the spirit of revelation. It is by the mercy and the grace of God that the eyes of a man be open. In scripture, the eyes of a man was open when he said, Thou son of David, have He didn't say, thou son of David, don't pass me by. He would have remained there crying till Jesus. That was the last time Jesus would pass Jericho. But I saw a relationship between the mercy of God and the spirit of revelation. Is thou son of David, will I remain blind like this forever? Have. He never said, I want to walk. The walking is a subset of the mercy when illumination come. Oh, I want to see. I want. Mm -mm. Thou son of David, have mercy. It's a language God cannot pass by. No matter what you know to do once, God hears mercy. He remembers the blood and he turns. What should I do for you? You didn't call me correctly. Oh. I hope you know. Yes, that's why I said mercy. I don't even know your name. I said son of David. Whether you are carpenter or Jesus, I added mercy to my confusion. Have mercy on me. That's how you can see someone who will be bragging around. I went to theological school and teaching nonsense and jargons. And someone will sit down and say, Lord, I came from the village. There was no light in our community. But Lord, I know that I've been seeing myself in dreams. Ministering and raising the, the dead and watches. Can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes. Boom. One scripture. He may not be able to quote everything. One scripture. And with that scripture, you will do exploits. I like you to prepare your spirit. Because what I want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way. People come to the house of God for many years, Jimmy. And you find out that they are not growing. How do you grow? There are two indices for growth. It's no confusion. Number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. If you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom, you are not growing, sir. Whether they ordain you pastor, apostle, deacon, once you are not accessing the mystery of the kingdom, you are not growing. It's as simple as that. Because that's how we reign in this kingdom. On the strength of mysteries. What do you know now that took away fear from you? The fear you had in January. What entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say, no way, not again. If your fear of January is still your fear of today, you made the word of God unfruitful in your life. Someone entered this year wondering, and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation as they say that no 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 that one that was that was last year's challenge you won't talk that nonsense with me again because you know what to do not bold face for nothing for jesus himself knew what to do my assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of god's election and grace i will continue to show you what to do the result you desire versus the mystery that connects it. That's my assignment. To continue to show you that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities. But accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result. Not the mystery available. The mystery that is allocated. You want to be blessed. Anything in the Bible will not bless you anyway. You have to find the one that is allocated for you. You don't put rice in a pot and when it boils, you lift it up and see beans. You will see food, but not beans. If it's beans you want to cook, you better find out one, where to get beans, two, how to cook it. Correct? So anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for. There are people who are blessed financially, but this sickness will kill you. You go to the hospital and treat it to refuse to come. Brothers and sisters, there is an allocation. You have to find us. There are pastors who are so anointed. They can raise the dead. But you, they will never have up to 30 members. There is a mystery that keeps men. 
People are not stupid to just come and sit down, sit outside, endure all kinds of things. No, sir. My assignment is that by the agency of the Spirit that I communicate to you the mysteries, when you gather them together like this, it's like a chain that connects you and heaven. When you move in life, the moment a challenge comes, you smile because you understand the key to address it. Fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for. There are things I used to fear years ago. I don't fear them again. I didn't cast out the spirit of fear. Understanding took me out of that realm. You see that? Yes. So please, I want us to focus. When you see us cry for the spirit of understanding, this thing is not just, even this anointing, because you see many people, especially ministers, this is what we are all looking for. Anointing. Anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head. This anointing you see has dynamics. It doesn't just work anyhow. How many people are you going to lay hands on on your life? Won't it kill you? There is a system. There are many means of transportation. There is bicycle. There is jet. If you want to arrive Lagos with a bicycle, you may die before you arrive there. That's how the dispensing of the anointing is. You will meet people. There are it, knowing the vehicle is not just enough. You must understand the system of helping it reach people. There's somebody seated outside, another overflow. There's somebody online in another nation. How do you, if all you know is just to lay hands on people, how do you bless those who are far? Please pray before I start teaching in one minute and say, Lord, change my level. Insist, please pray. Change my level. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Show me something. Lord, where I am is a revelation of my limited knowledge. I take responsibility and I admit, open my eyes. Satan can't be that powerful. There's something I am not seeing. Lord, I've been falling under the anointing, but that anointing has not healed one sick body. There is something I'm not getting. I have been sowing seeds, but a harvest has not been coming. What is blocking it? What more do I need to know? Hallelujah. Please sit down. <laughs> mm. The Bible says, when you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened. Paul is teaching here. And then he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance alienates a man from the life of God. The experience of that Zoe life. Are we together now? That their understanding is darkened. That's the issue. Then it says that as a result of that darkened understanding, they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom. So they may have semblance of what should be, but never enter into the experience of it. Most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be. They know what they should become. But the power to make it happen, that is a derivative of light. You know you should be more anointed than now. You know you should be more prosperous. But what is the limitation? It says, haven't their understanding darkened? And then alienated from the life of God on the strength of the ignorance that is in them. I came angry in my spirit. Oh. We'll, be, we'll pray. I trust God for grace. So that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray. 1 Peter 5.10 Just one scripture. There is a level of rest. I began to perceive in my spirit 
that many of us were ordained by God to enter this year that we have not entered. And my assignment is to insist that these two months left, we must force something to happen. The Bible says, but the God of all grace, listen, who had called us into eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered, the word suffered there is endured, endured with certain things a while, what will he do? Make you perfect, uh huh. Establish you, uh huh. Strengthen you, uh huh. Settle you, give you stability. These four things must happen to someone's life between this November and December. Listen, I really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors. Are we together? It says, after you have and you have put up with certain things for a while. Put up with poverty for a while. Put up with pain for a while. Put up with disappointment. Listen, it can't be forever. No, sir. A book has many pages. When you stay on one page forever, it's a curse. After you have suffered a while. The Bible says weeping and just for a night. If you cry to the next morning, cry in the afternoon cry till another night that crying has violated god's ordinances he allows people to only weep in the night after you have suffered for a while make you perfect establish you establish you then he says strengthen you all kinds of might financial might intellectual might then he says set to you said to you you are unmovable you have gotten to a level where you are not afraid uh -uh. the lord declared that this is a year of triumph i believe this so when god gave me this scripture it entered my spirit and the lord began to communicate to me and say son you have not hit my expectation for the year this triumph there is there is something there is there is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant here and there like rain people are getting it but it is in a ministry of thousands of people if only four people testify as the man of god not failed four over thousands is zero round it up is zero so there is a dimension the services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services i tell you there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world because brothers and sisters God cannot lie God cannot lie God cannot lie God cannot lie so the Lord showed me this scripture and it really really blessed me tonight I'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention the mystery of divine intervention what is the spiritual secret behind calling God in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out what is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men when you need the help of God when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven brothers and sisters there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system the mystery of divine intervention the Bible is full of near, near shame experiences where God got up, showed up for individuals, showed up for the nation of Israel. God turned the lives of people around overnight. Let me show you one scripture you will want to know. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Learn this scripture, add it to your spiritual arsenals. You will need it, I guarantee you. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want us to run uh, tonight. Read it with me please. One, two, read. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day. The Lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name say come promise. That he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble. 
he says God knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in God listen please there is a system in God where God can plug men out of the fire remember the story of the three Hebrew boys the Bible says they found the furnace seven times that those who threw them inside the furnace listen they threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them and when four of them were inside the king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said i i look and i see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that satan puts because you see your destiny is a function of many things and sadly it includes the lives of others and that also includes their carelessness there are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause but you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself this is like an extension of the mystery of exemption the mystery of divine intervention where men called upon God and God showed up and turned the lives of nations around turned the lives of individuals around there is a way you call upon God for your personal prayer life but brothers and sisters there is a way you call upon God to intervene on a matter that if he does not intervene sometimes it may be that you are finished There was a time death was killing people in Israel. Killing people. There was a way they called on God. Divine intervention is real. All through scripture, we see that God is able to arise. Psalms 102 verse 13. It says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time in god's calendar there is a time oh there is a time to favor joshua selman there is a time to lift me and you see the bible says in amos chapter 3 verse 9 that god does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when god is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and god has declared that it's a season of triumph I believe God it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for Zion to say I am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come many people want intervention intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of God supernatural visitation of God all of a sudden God steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight he says have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails in one day she shall put forth a son why do we need divine intervention because of our imperfection as human beings 
the first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings our inaccuracy as human beings inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of god will necessitate god to create that provision Are we together? If a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents when his liver is quartered to die. He has repented but the liver is still going to kill him. That gentleman doesn't just need a healing. He needs a divine intervention. When somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40. You see that he's going to die in the prison? He needs divine intervention. He's born again, but he's in the prison. Our families are in desperate need for divine intervention. Is that true? Hmm. Father not working, mother not working, 13 children, 10 of them not working. All of them graduates. Haba. There is need for a strange intervention. How about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here, we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God. I wish there was no such reality. But brothers and sisters, the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world. I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text. I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him. I should come back. There's something he's supposed to do. The guy said he's not coming back. After graduating from school, they're asking you to come. They will bath you, put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this. After that, they'll say you can go. The guy said he's not coming. And the man told him that that thing, whatever it is, will pursue him and look for him with his blood father the boy was speaking to me and i said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they bath you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh, god is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you you keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say i won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull third child very dull and the person says, i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in a dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see don't reject darkness without having the light component. Don't just say, I reject darkness. Eh, every shine in my village, God forbid. It's a joke. You must have the light component. Otherwise, I tell you to haunt you and tear you into pieces. There are forces of darkness. We need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy. We need the intervention because, listen, the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point. Now, look at me. Listen, let me tell you something. In the next 10 years, there are things that I will know then that I don't know now. But Satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge I need to know 10 years to come. I need intervention by the mercy of God to give me victory before I enter that level of understanding. If my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone, it means that I will be punished on many grounds before I come into that knowledge. You need divine intervention. Is God speaking to someone here? Hmm. Let me tell you this. I am very outspoken about results. I'm not a man of God that will lie to you and say results don't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If results don't matter, why do you go to work? Why do you wait for salary at the end of the month? Is that true? Results matter to God, matter to the devil, matter to everybody on earth. Whether we agree or not. 
results are consolations to your Christian experience. Whilst it is true that we do not serve God just for results, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, even Jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth and was not yielding the result. He caused it in annoyance. So God wants us to bear fruit. But there are keys that we must understand. Please look up. There are many of us here and there are many of our family members here had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention, many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened. Listen carefully. Are we together now? Yes. Somebody looked at you and vowed and said, Pastor Alpha, I will destroy you. We said, no problem, you wouldn't destroy me, but you did not understand the component, the revelation component, and eventually it caught up with you. I prayed for a lady. She probably may be following now online. Married, loved her husband. All of a sudden, the husband just changed and became a, a very, very funny man. Doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that. And she, she could not take it again and she called me. You know, I prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text. She said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say, sorry, Elijah, I, I, I hope this is a new keyboard I bought for you. And you laugh. Something was programmed. Your house that has been 10 years refused to be completed. You program something by understanding. And someone comes to say, ah, Sam, I don't know. Do you mind me complete this house? And you will say yes because it was intentionally done. You don't say, I'm surprised you are coming. I'm not surprised. You were called. Are we together? That's why when people die in the villages, the Habalis don't cry. Have you ever seen them crying? No. Something they programmed. They programmed somebody from London and tell him where to come and die. When he dies, other people are crying and the guy says, well, it's just to let you know that we are not children. You can program things. From the foundations of the earth, some things were programmed. And the intelligence of the father, he watched everything unfold through redemption. No power could stop it. Satan tried. He entered. He went when Jesus was fasting. Now came and entered Peter. Now came and entered. When he entered Judas, I'm sure Satan thought he was smart. Paul was watching it like a movie and saying, yeah, yeah, had they known this? So this was the caricature that God was making out of Satan. He thought he was smart, but he was, God was using him as a slave. Because you see, when you kill a man, according to scripture, his blood will haunt you. So God made sure it was Satan that killed Jesus. Go and read your Bible. Blood is a mystery. It remains on the head of the killer forever. Paul was watching this. Whether he was in a hole, in a cave, in prison, I don't know. But Paul was saying, ah, ah. Satan, couldn't you see? Jesus casted you out of Peter and left you in Judas. You didn't ask why. You just continued until you became a fool. That's the reason why when we invoke the blood, something really happens. It happens to whoever was the killer. When Cain killed Abel, blood cried against him. Cried against him.
I need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. Samaria needed divine intervention. Please sit down. They got to a point. Scripture says, come. That they got to a point where women. Can you imagine brothers and sisters? That you get to a point where you are not just eating goats. You are not just eating clothes. Women. You have your child. I'm telling you. There is a strange grace this year. For fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry. We have seen very dramatic manifestations and, and all of that. There are mothers all around with their children moving right and center. Now imagine Pastor Alpha's that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying look there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food and she liasses with a Jimmy's wife. Two of them they carry Jael and carry David and two of them stand and agree and they say we are eating jael this night you eat it what sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being now watch this then the bible says they ate the first one then the next day it was the turn to eat the other one and the mother said no and the woman said no you ate my child listen while that confusion was happening the king started passing and they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me because he had that Elijah program famine. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, he said, okay, now he's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya, by this time, tomorrow, by this time tomorrow listen it didn't tell you how it will happen if you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit you will never ask how results manifest you see let me tell you something when people argue and say how did this thing happen they are not wise the raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit it said by this time tomorrow by this time I'm hurrying up. I would have given you scriptures, but I really want us to pray. That by this time tomorrow, they call, they, please help them. This will cause this and that. And then a foolish man, like many doubters that insult men of God, he said, what are you saying? I, I mean, I'm the minister of this and that. I read this and that. Even if the windows, AJ, he knew that much that heaven had a window. With what did they build the window? He never asked. If God will open the window, will these things be? And the prophet said me, you will see it all. But they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. Then look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. He starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest. Are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass? Watch this. Look at this. Let me teach you something. Watch this. Look at me and learn. If I prophesy to you, Emeka, and say by tomorrow, if it is really by the spirit, I say by tomorrow, money is coming to your account. I have placed that word in the spirit. Hold on. The word manifests by the wisdom of the spirit. Let me tell you what the wisdom of the spirit is. It will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down. Then connect it to the individual. Listen. The wisdom of God will move to a rich man. If it's not open, it will move to somebody who God had instructed to so If it will keep moving like that, that's how the anointing got to Mary to be the mother of Jesus. The Bible never said the name of the mother of Jesus will be Mary. The prophecy started searching for a virgin. When he found one and she said, I'm available, he brought her out.
Listen. There are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens for God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says, I want to bless you, who is already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith so that when God says, I will do this, you now sit with your limited mind and say, I only know Uncle A and B. And I already know A promise you will never see me. And God is saying, no, we are talking about the wisdom of the creator. Look at what happened. Four lepers. Everybody say four lepers. Four lepers were sitting quietly. And the wisdom of God. The spirit of wisdom. Because the word of God must come to pass. The man of God had declared it. And the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired. But they didn't know that at that point. They were under the influence of a man of God. And the word started programming that result. They say why sit here till we die even that talk was by the spirit they thought they were gisting and they said look let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies and tell them kill us but let's eat first the bible says the moment they began to go god changed their people they began to hear the sounds of chariots and all of them, listen were they not warriors is it not fight they fought to get those things couldn't they fight again when God wants to bless you, he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen. I know I should not graduate, but there is a mystery that can be programmed. A man is watching your result. 37 over 50. You need 50. Something comes on him and he, and he does not even know. Listen. Listen. People, some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and i said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out didn't ask where it came from then when it disappears, you say, where did it go to? You see how we think? Son of man, can these bones live again? Immediately, oh, not after 10 years, not gradually. Can these bones live again? He said, God, I've seen many miracles, but I've not seen this type. That a dry bone. It's not like a dead human being. I believe in raising the dead, but dry bones. And he said, okay, I want to show you something. That when I show up, I compress time and make things happen. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy. And things began to shift. Listen. It is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit. Take it from me. The moment a man programs something in the spirit, you better find a way of countering it in the spirit. Otherwise, it must manifest. <laughs> this is what Habalists do. They conjure things. They conjure spirit. And then they tell the person, go, it is done. At the point they said, go, it is done. He didn't feel anything. Oh, go. We shall be, we put your husband in a bottle. And you saw it go it is done the woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back and she'll be laughing you're already in a bottle two days later physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed after one week the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must so you look at a woman who is barren it may look like you just touched her stomach, but it's more than that. Mysteries were programmed in the spirit. But he said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? He says, the power of the highest. Brothers and sisters, I came to prophesy to someone, it will be a quick walk. Oh. It will be a quick walk. It will be a quick walk. I tell you, except it's not the God. I told you that the remaining services, don't miss them. They will be, help them please. They will be strongly prophetic services. St
strongly prophetic services it will be a quick walk there is a mystery that can push men false prophecy push men it is possible that in one day something can happen to you and you will turn and say God I'm sorry for doubting you when it was time for the animals to enter the ark of Noah he didn't call one of them something was manipulated in the spirit all the animals started lining up regardless of their hostilities they lined up and came quietly listen let me tell you something the day I learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm I stopped wasting my time about physical things trust me I really mean it I saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead I stopped wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm they program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening you see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form do you believe what I'm saying because let me tell you something one of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things there are results that are wrong something programmed it it may be our ignorance it may be something I bring you a message of hope the realm of the spirit is still there that means there is still an ability to access it please sit down I'm just trying to compose myself my spirit is boiling this night listen listen I have experimented this thing too many times too many times too many times you can program favor you can program breakthrough listen you can program judgment on the wicked you can program speed the word of God is an instrument of creation you can create realities that were not there when you hear people testify it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere a word created it when you are programming mysteries you don't attach a face to it the wisdom of God will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm you don't say God bless me through my uncle uh -uh. I have accessed the principles that brings the blessing it is God that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough he can use a donkey he can use stone it doesn't matter the most important thing is that let it come Are we together? Yes. Ah, I tell you, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention, angelic interventions, and the Lord is just opening my eyes, and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels every time God opens do you know why when I speak like this people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when Paul Saul now saw Jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit I'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but I stand and I see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening 
and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was it not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them Mandekatos, I release angels, strange ministry of intervention. Brakoto Soto Ketabarata, Zegetekata, by the authority of the Most High, angelic interventions over lives and families. It must end tonight. In the name of Jesus, is the year of triumph. It must end tonight. Shkapatakatos. Zeketekete, zekete, reketo koso pariata, epo shabababababa, manda kato sakata, thou shall arise, thou shall arise, thou shall arise, and have mercy upon Zion. Thou shall arise. God is arising over a family. God is arising over a family. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion, many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I've not finished. But in Jesus name, I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels that whilst the teaching is going on let intervention start in the name of Jesus Christ strange interventions strange interventions please sit down if you can please help those outside very quickly I will give us four keys let's use 10 minutes sorry I will not be explaining it in depth I want us to pray I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I feel the spirit of prayer here. There are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. 
Number one, please quickly, prayer. I will give you two scriptures and then we will we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then Peter was free. We see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used, was used to bring strange and divine intervention. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Please write this down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. It's a long reading. Don't project it. Just write it down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. This was um, a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy. And then the people got angry and they mobbed them. You know, and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer. Then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says everyone in the prison had them. All of a sudden there was an earthquake. And then the Bible says the things broke and all doors open. I like that. All doors. It didn't say some doors. When the chain broke, all doors. The doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open. All doors open. Prayer can open doors. James chapter 5 verse 13. Maybe you can project that. He said, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the... Re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we live to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to live has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door foreclosed towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed the doors that used to bring you blessings have changed Something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life. Prayer zero. Word life zero. You need an intervention. Prayer. The scripture I want us to read now is Psalms 18. Never forget this scripture. It's one of the arsenals that I have for my personal. Um, it's a scripture that has blessed me. I have prayed this scripture. If, if this scripture was a shook. By now, I would have, maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Psalm 18. Don't ever forget that scripture. Don't ever forget it for as long as you live. If you are a leader going far, this is a chief tool that you need. We're going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I'll pick for you the verses we're reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord 
I will do what? Call upon the Lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised. So by calling upon him shall I be saved from my enemies. Verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me. This is a man in trouble. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, hallelujah. I didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me. I called upon the Lord and cried upon unto my God. He heard my voice from out of his temple. And my cry came before him. Even to where? Even to his ears. There is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty God. Let's jump to verse 14, then to 17, then 40 to 45. It's a quick reading. Verse 14. Yeah, he sent out his arrows. God has arrows. So, hey, look up. I learned this. I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yeah, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We are really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. When you open a branch in a locality that you don't know, there are people who need to come and as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. 45. Verse 45. The stranger shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places. Now, 47 to 48 is a scripture I don't want you to ever forget. Ready? Go ahead. Give us, well, go to 47. Go to 47. It is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. Who did it? Who did it? He says it is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. 48. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Divine intervention. As a man of God, there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you. As a leader, there are wicked forces. But when you catch this and catch the revelation, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord will be with you mysteriously. You will not travel and sit down and be shaking. Will a car jam me? Will it break my leg? Will it break my head? No, sir. Rest and quietness on the strength of scripture. Everybody say prayer. We need to learn how to call upon the Lord. Listen, do you know most people don't know how to call upon the Lord? They know how to lament. Hey, oh, you are not calling upon the Lord. You are shouting a lamentation, a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited. He said, Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, let me not be ashamed, though. Let not my enemies triumph over me. There is a way you can pray with God. Sometimes like Hannah, you can't even shout. It's not something. You, you just lie down and say, oh God, 
oh God, deliver me from the shame of the wicked. There are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled. Lord, confound their, their counsel. And God will say, it got to my ear. I had it. I'm on my way coming. Prayer. Number two. The second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding. Praise. Praise. Praise as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith. Praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance. Listen. This revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of Christ. People are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders. You know, people don't know why the presence of God is still mighty in Africa. It's because Africa is a praising continent. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They laugh at us and think that when we are dancing, it's nonsense. Praise is a mystery. You want to turn around your situation? No matter what you do, if you have not praised, there is no Lord. Believe me. Lord, give us understanding. Psalm 22 verse 3. It says, Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praise of Zion. God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest. Moving your body is not a sign of, it's not, you are not, you have problems. You can cry but still praise. Are we together? It's, this is a, it's a powerful mystery I want you to learn. Our father Bishop David Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago, he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life. As soon as that happened, they declared praise. I said, oh dear, spiritual intelligence. Let me tell you what other people would have do, done. They would have organized a cocktail party and said, you know, we, and the devil, the devil said, that's, I'm coming back. Praise. Praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil. Because you see, let me tell you, one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet he says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dryeth the bones You don't praise God when things are going well. You praise God to make them go well. Listen, you don't praise God when, when things are going well and you praise God. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested. But before they manifested, it's called perfected praise. Praise with understanding. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Hold on. Listen. Let me tell you what Satan will tell you. The moment you sing that, he will tell you, is it not your sister that just died? Is it not five carryovers we are seeing? Or oh God, did they not just sack you? Ah. The gentleman that has been promising to marry you is it not by 8 a.m. this morning he says not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god Satan says, why are you praising him? He said, no reason. I'm praising him to create my testimony. You see that? 
listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting God to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is worth it oh is worth it reserve the 40,000 for shoes and use it to pay for a small room put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me I don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask God what I do in the night yes yes sometimes I carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil I carry my phone put it there I'm not dancing before them I say Lord you are great I dance before you people are coming from everywhere rain or no rain publicity or no publicity and God says you are doing this for me I say Lord who else will I do it for and you are celebrating him Lord you are faithful and you are worshipping him you are sweating like a fool and while you are doing that God is dispatching angels okay make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account that hundred thousand I gave you I didn't tell you who to send it to send it to him oh his mother is at home for giving birth to him send an angel there too and my innocent mother is lying down she'll wake up in the morning and say mama where are you say who are you say just come take my praise this our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination this pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah I, how can okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a gun and says you should dance won't you do something Some of us, when we were in the world, you know the kind of dance, demonic, satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you. You got drunk dancing it. A spirit entered you dancing it. I'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of God, but I'm saying there, there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone. With, listen, listen. Most people dance. You can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and God will look at you and say you are wasting your time. It is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable. Don't just move your body around just because you are happy. That, that's, that's entertainment. Brothers and sisters, there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes. But you are doing it with understanding. Don't think you will only always be laughing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. No job for you. No job for your wife. No job for your five children. They are all graduates. You have prayed though. Nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, try singing and celebrating God. Everyone in their room rejoicing. Jesus, you are full and you are just dancing. Let me tell you what will happen. The Lord will start bringing testimonies. Remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995. And you say, Lord, I remember. And you start dancing it. You are, you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created. You would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself. Brothers and sisters, you have programmed something in the spirit. You will get up in the morning and just dress and say, Father, thank you. And get a phone call. Who is this? I'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table. Who are you? So I finished for what did you read? Anyway, it's not what you read. Where are you? Come quickly. I like you. Ha! You just know that praise is working. Praise is working. Let the people praise me. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise me. It's an instruction. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results, but let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. You can stop there. 
Zephaniah. It may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write. Media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14. We're reading to verse 20. Listen. It says, sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady. It's talking about human beings. You must read the Bible prophetically. When he says daughter, find out what he means. There are times in the Bible all people are sons. There are times all people are daughters. Are we together? So don't think he's talking to ladies. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. We're reading to verse 20. The Lord had taken away thy judgments. And has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. We're reading to verse 20. Give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold at that time. I will undo all that afflict thee. And I will save her that halted. And gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time, I will bring you again. Even in the time that I will gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, say the Lord. You read that scripture and say, Lord, whether you understand it or not, I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something. I can see everything. Hey, hey. Do you see everything? I can see everything. One more time. Can see everything turning around. Please sit down. When you go back home, continue. 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 Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? Or will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> they say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's result, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. 
brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, it's bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God, is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it. That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. The first six verses. The, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse six is connected to verse one. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. He says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seeds you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And quite a very serious seed just you know a military officer just came dropped the seed and when i saw it the seed was in dollars I said wow in this recession this seed and the lord told me no 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 make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the lord told me i started dancing i said thank you jesus this is it. when god gives you seed to sow his intervention no getting the seed to sow is an act of god's mercy that you say lord i must provoke this but i have no seed then he gives seed to the sower those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny they keep getting bread but those who want to create a future brothers and sisters i have created realities in my life with seeds i believe in the power of a seed listen don't let people because of their cynicism the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again 
that God gave us an instruction. We were just resuming. Koinonia. And God gave an instruction. He said, so everything, everything, everything. I don't mean small. So everything, let it go. I said, thank you, Jesus. You are ready to lift us. That is revelation. By faith, Abel offered. You offer by faith. You don't offer by, by tricks and all kinds of, no, no, no. And we release it. Brothers and sisters, it didn't reach seven days. Seven days. More than ten times that amount came. Seeds. I'm not saying you should give carelessly, no. But brothers and sisters, the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years. Nobody is moving forward in your family. You are just sitting down. And God is saying, look, you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice. One day you get angry and say, Lord, I am tired of this. Anna did not have money to give, but she said, Lord, let's do it. Give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said, it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future, and slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes. And watch what happened. You just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going. I hardly share my testimonies. I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary, um, you know, people once they hear preachers talk, there are people who just get angry just like that. It's nonsense. Brothers and sisters, learn to sow seeds. But the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions. This is the mistake many of us have been making. You package a seed. Some of you come and join the line. Apostle, here is a seed I'm sowing. I always ask people, what is this for? And people say, for nothing, just, I just feel like seeing you. That's a donation. That's a donation, brothers and sisters. All seeds are not the same. There is a seed you give to the poor. There is something it does to you. There is a seed that you give to widows and orphans. There is a kind of result. There is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are. If the word of God were a lie, I would have died since. Because the risk I've taken with this word, it would have killed me since. But I believe him. I believe him. When I sowed that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled through sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he just goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. Amen. This attachment to money. Listen, this, many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom.
kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew will create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not sown anything and they keep moving around with CV? What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children. No job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, Please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Ejimi, I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. She do seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so, I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman and she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, I would never have the effort tree to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She says she farms yam. I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said which church is close around your area? She said there's living faith. I said go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying. Singing any song in your language you know. While you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16. The Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. 
God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5, 10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year, two months pregnant. You do every calculation you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about? Number four. The fourth key is the power of prophecy. The power of the prophetic. Weapons of supernatural intervention. The power of prophecy. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. We've already discussed it. Just write it down. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8. The story of Elisha in Samaria. And the abundance that came to an entire land. Because there was a divine intervention by prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 from verse 13. Please give it to us. The Bible says and by a prophet. Listen carefully. And by a prophet. It says... The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. How did they come out of Egypt? By a prophet. Not by God. You would think God will say, oh, by me. Yes, it is by God. But the instrument that he used was a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Listen. Listen. There are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless. If only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God. You can come out of a situation overnight. Some battles are totally needless. They are products of pride and ignorance. Take note of these things I'm saying. Pride and ignorance. Some battles are totally needless. There is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it. A gentleman had been writing, I think it was Waiek or Neko, I can't remember, for over maybe six, seven years. I remember one time he came and he was crying. I didn't allow him to finish. I said, that's all right. Let me pray for you. It is done. And he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking, he answered nonsense in the exam. Because his brain had, he had stretched the thing, he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for work. And yet it came out, he had all credits like that. And he said, truly, this is my result. I say, of course it's not your result. God gave you to help you move forward. Of course it's not your result. When other people are celebrating their intelligence, you go to God and say, thank you, this one you gave me. There are things when other people are saying, I got, you turn to God and say, this one came from you. Prophetic intervention. Brothers and sisters, God still has anointed men. 
Yes. An anointed man is not a man who speaks well. An anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing. There are people who are privileged by the election of grace. That God has put ancient, ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body. Your own price is to believe. They may not look like it, but they carry it. What you have, you have. It was given to you. Are we together? I truly believe that someone tonight, I told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services. And it will start from tonight. Just the five minutes or so we have to pray. And then I speak over your life. When prophecy comes, receive it. Receive it. You can reject it. But you can receive it. Do you know? I listen to every koinonia message. This message now that is being preached. It's not Joshua Selman. This is the man of God teaching. Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Sheba sabalakata barakato shabradi alabata. Those online pray. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in, I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. The prosperity that you said I will walk in, Lord, I believed you, I still believe you. So, desperate people we want more more Lord lift your voice and pray we are desperate people we want more more Lord we are desperate people we want more more Lord we are desperate people Tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than this It's gotta be more, gotta be more Gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things And we press in Gotta be more Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result. Hear the word of the Lord. Be crushed into pieces. Lift your voice and pray. Shakatoko sote parata. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain, mountain of witchcraft, mountain of delay. I crush you by the God of heaven. Lord, 
Le bros kata barakato shakata. Embreketekete. Those outside pray. Online pray. I decree and declare. Hear the word of the Lord. Who are down mountain. Before Joshua Selman. I command you become play. Shena masadea. Shena masadea. Na mana na malia na mala bosada na biara. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. That every promise. Hanging in the realm of the spirit. I prophesy. By the mystery of divine intercession. You must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body. My breakthrough. Find expression. My lifting. Find expression. My advancement. Find expression. I give you a body. Manifest in my life. Pray, find expression. I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me. But was taken away from me. I decree and declare. Return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Be serious. Pray. Every relationship that should not have left every finance that should not have left every favor every breakthrough i call you back every access every platform in the name of jesus the son of the living god Bring them, bring them, bring them in. Say, Hallelujah. The angels of the Lord are in this place. It's time for miracles. It's time for that sickness to leave your body. All those outside, please lift your hands. Just those outside. Hallelujah. There are so many angels outside. Listen, there will be such a move of power and of the spirit outside. Hallelujah. At the count of three, you will shout Jesus. That fire, devils will begin to cry and jump out. Just those outside. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. 
to heal, to deliver, to set free. Thank you for the confirmation of your word. Right now, in the name of Jesus, those outside. One, two, three. Shake Bokotos. So God so praise. Just those outside, the power of God is falling. I command devils, come out, come out, come out. I command powers, demon spirits. I command them now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, the angels of God are moving everywhere. Outside, the power of God is shaking every demonic hole. Acts of witchcraft, yokes, curses. Those outside, lift your hands again. Lift your hands. I just want you to focus on the screen. Those of you outside, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will count three and you will shout that name Jesus again. No power will hide right now. One, two, three. Go, 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 come out, come out of them. Devils, yokes, bondages, by the fire, Please help the ushers if they need help. Help the ushers if they need help. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. And miracles everywhere. I say right now. And right now. Miracles. The power of God will move mightily inside this place right now and shake foundations. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, Jesus, no instruments. At the count of three, no instruments. Just shout that name, Jesus. And the power of God will begin to deliver people inside here. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Shake it, take it, take it. Record and break back it. Record so paria. The fire of God is coming down right now, mightily. Shake it, make it to sota. Take a prayer staba. Some break take it, take it, bring them out. Please help the ushers if they need more help. Shake 
Hallelujah. This role, lift your hands. The angel of the Lord is standing in this role. I pray right now, every activity of witchcraft, according to what the Lord is showing me, those in this role, right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to shout, Jesus, right now, one, two, go. Let it be shaken, oh God. Now, 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 There are still many people outside. Please, outside, lift your hands. No devil will escape tonight. Outside. At the top of your voice, after the count of three, many of you will feel fire as if it's just poured on you. My God, let no spirit, let no spirit remain right now. One, two, three. All those that have come out Those in front here As a point of contact To those who are there by the blood, I bring a separation. I bring a separation. By the blood, now, 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 I bring a separation. By the blood, the mystery of 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 the 
Bring the lady. Bring her here. Patekebosha. Arosakata, Zekota Boba, Pompaliatosa, Arosia Katuka, Pompale, Pompale, Soriato, Ajata, Prati, Pata, Pata, Suatebria, 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 Hallelujah. The God that we serve is not a dead God. The God that we serve is alive. He can change your life. The God that I serve is a living God. Bring the lady. Bring her here. Bring her. 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 Now, leave her. Kapasha. Out. Sheila. Never return again. Sheila. 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 Now, all the devils here, at the count of three, your exit comes. You hear my voice. I speak to you from the realm of the spirit. One, two. So go, 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 go. Out. 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 You must go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go. 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 Be free. I set you free. Marital delay. Give me a hand. With a loud shout, out you go. Now. Now. 
Lay your hands on this girl. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Out. I see you in the spirit. Go. Out of her. Now. Go now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Take over. Out. Posha. Come out now. Posha. In the name of Jesus Christ. The serpent and spirit. Your time is over. Go. Go. Listen. Some of you are not out here. But there are things that are already parting ways with you. Are you getting my point? I want to rebuke delay. Many of you do not know the danger of delay. If you are not experiencing any delay, no problem. But I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God. Where is your sister? Bring her. Sister, where are you? Please come and stand here. Your breakthrough has come. Marital delay, it will die now, at once. Hold my hands. Look at me. Just look at me. All right, then. You will leave her never ever to return to her again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I challenge you. Something will leave you right now. I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. Marital delay. Go! Never to return. Lay your hands on your stomach. You will never say you have a fibro. I cause that spirit. It's a family thing. Hold her. This is a family thing. May they be free, O oh God. Bring salvation to this family right now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, the devil hates this prayer. Because if he can get you to experience delay, you will give up on your faith. There are many of you, there are levels you would have entered right now. Bring this lady. Yes, come with her. Just clear the way for them. Let me just touch her head. Well done, ushers. Let her be free. Let her go. Together with the delay. Zego Palada Garanda Shia Kataga do Siza Lagataga Branda Sila Barando Jigli. Listen, lift your hands, everybody. Outside, lift your hands. I'm about to challenge the spirit of delay. 
Sakataya Mandeka, Sete La Mantaria, you can move forward because something is tying you down right now in the name that is above every other name. Every delay in this place at the count of three, I command the devils be gone right now. One, two, three, go. Go, 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 I cause delay, I cause delay, I cause delay, every kind of delay, every kind of delay, where is the woman I where is the woman I spoke about? One mama that was here. How are you, madam? You, you came alone? Where are they? Come, come. Who are those that came with mommy? Bring this woman here. Sorry, just take it easy so they don't. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Where's the daughter? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God is going to visit you. This is witchcraft. Eh? Madam, this is witchcraft. I'm not going to go into any long story, but I need to pray for you. You believe that? This is your daughter? Yes, sir. How are you, my dear? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. I'm seeing you tied. Kai, this is, this is acute witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Edo. Edo State? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. And I always find my spirit in the village. Uh -uh, now, hold on. Why are you? I want to, it's just that I didn't want to talk to you. See, let me tell you something. Huh? The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. Are you listening to me? I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine in your village. When you sleep in the night, they call your spirit. Is that true? Yes, sir. Just if I'm lying, just yes, say I'm sir. lying. Yes, sir. When you sleep, where do you see yourself? I when find you... myself in the village. You find yourself in the village. Yes. This is what I'm seeing. They are invoking her spirit. This is what that that witch doctor tried to do to the spirit of Saul. You see that in the Bible. These people are necromancers. You will be free tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you? He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Light is shining. Madam, look at me. Can you shout? If I ask you to shout, can you shout? I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Can you do that? Go ahead. Let her go now. Let her go now. Out. An end comes. I command breakthrough. Let this family change. Don't cry. Can I pray for you? Father, let this lady experience breakthrough. This is part of it. Eh? You are the one that brought her. Celebrate this lady, please. You see why it's a blessing, madam. You feel pain. At, used to feel pain at your back. Eh? You came here sick. Look at. You came here sick now. Come and walk. Let me see where the sickness is now. Don't worry. Come up. Just come up. Check yourself. Check. Do what you couldn't do. Check whether the pain is there. Do what you couldn't do. Just do. Check. I was already here. You 
were what? I was already healed. You were already healed. They have been calling me to come for this program. I couldn't come. Even when I was in the shop, my daughter said, Mommy, come. I kept a seat for you. When you enter, the Holy Spirit said, That is the man that will deliver you. I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago. But there's battle. I always complain, why am I seeing my spirit in the village? And anything we touch with my husband, there's nothing. I went to, even when you are preaching, you say some people will go to some me church to go and receive miracle. I went to, the last one I went to, I weep. I gave money, I cooked to this woman. He says it's a prophet. You cook for the prophetess? Who cook? And after I left the place, after I left the place, he just damaged my image, was just saying different things about me. And I'm not like that. And God did it for me today. I'm the king. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the one that brought her. Are you her daughter? No, oh, she's my neighbor. She's your neighbor. What do you want God to do for you? I just want to get admission. That's all. Admission? Yes. Where? University. Have you written jam? No, not you are yet. writing next week. Yes. Hold my hands, my God. In the name that is above all names, we give you admission in this place now. The God who is bigger than any registrar, bigger than any senate, you will come back and stand right here and testify. You have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, no power will stop you. I use this as a point of contact to everyone who is going to be writing jam whether for you or for your loved ones I tell you the truth and I lie not see listen prophecy every power that says you will not be admitted in the name that is above all names. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive your admission. Well, listen. Whether you know what you are writing or not, May my God hold your hands. That oh, hand, that oh, God, oh, men, 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 it creates the scene for your breakthrough to happen. Parada shi ama krundi siza ma paradi ata zigo shila. Give me her hands. She was coming to fight me. No, shila. All right, you must. No, don't put it in. Hold on. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Out! You are a wicked spirit. By the power of the blood, go now. Don't waste our time here. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Be thou enthroned on high. Enthroned on high. Enthroned. Help me worship us. Be thou and
marriage marriage we are going to visit the issue of marriage right now please i want you to listen i'm just flowing as the holy ghost is giving me grace sister look at me just look at my eyes you must release her right now it's time for you to go out you go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I set you free let it leave you now let it leave you now Whether it's for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to stand and agree right now. I'm about to command that spirit that causes late marriage. Please take it very serious. This is a miracle service. Don't say it doesn't concern you. And all I want you to do is just to shout amen. All the spirits that come to molest you and molest your loved ones and cause them not to get married in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that name that is above every other name In the name that is above all names i pray right now by the power of the holy ghost please get said something mighty will happen in this place now every spirit that says there will not be marriage by the sword of elohim right now as you shout jesus they will depart from you now one two go Every marital delay. Go, 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 go. Let marriage spirit us back out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you. May your life partner come into your life. I prophesy. I call for your life partner supernatural marriage hallelujah hallelujah a lady has been healed of chest condition outside check yourself and run out here check it looks like ulcer you just feel something leave you please check and run quickly quickly Come and let God seal your miracle. The Lord just ministered to me. Please check, check. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick right now. Every infirmity bows to the name of Jesus. God has healed a lady. A lady. Is that the lady? another one come come you've been healed when god speaks to one he speaks to many look at just one prophetic word give them the mic is it working what happened to you just tell us quickly okay i just felt a pain leave my chest. you felt something leave you yeah. do what you couldn't do before i felt pain in my chest completely hold my hands never returns in the name of jesus christ let her go forever come what happened to you now I have been having this burning pain here. You've been having burning I pain. How long? For I've how long? I've been on drugs for over two weeks now. You've been on drugs? Yes. Uh -huh. Drugs is even in my bag right now. The drugs, you go and bring yes. it. 
Talk to her, what happened? Please tell us. A sharp pain left me. A sharp pain right now just disappeared. Come on, are you celebrating Jesus? Look at the drugs. These are the drugs you take. In the name that is above all names. Hold the drugs. Just hold it. Hold it. Look at me. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are perfecting her. She will not need these drugs again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself. God is healing more people with this kind of pain. If it's happening to you, come out right now. Come out. God is healing people. Ulcers. Ulcers are going right now. Okay, she's been healed. God bless you. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Talk to me. I've been having this pain of chest. Please make sure you don't tell lies. For the past two years now. For the I've past been, two years now. I've been two years. This chest pain. Chest pain. Yes, sir. Anytime okay. Anytime I try to breathe, it will hold. It will. When you try me. to breathe, it will hold it you. It will hook me. Uh huh. Sometimes I'll be crying, praying. My mom said that it is over, but I've been going to hospital to collect drugs. But I told my mom I couldn't, I can't take any drugs again. But I believe that God will heal me one day, one time. What happened right now? When you said that we should check, and when you prayed, I felt that I felt that something is out of me, and now I'm healed. Breathe, do breathe in deep. Any pain? No, Any sir. pain? No. Sir. Just keep breathing. The power of God is coming on you. Lord, let that be the end of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. All right. I've been having this chest pain for over two years and six months. Two years, six, six months. months. Yes. Pain. If I breathe in, it just pain. Okay, breathe in now. Breathe in right now. What happened to you right now? It's free. Complete pain. Hold my hands. Lord, it never returns to him again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this um, peptic ulcer since. Since 2006. Yes, and recently. Peptic ulcer. Yes. You are sure, confirmed. Yes. Okay. And last week, the thing started coming back again, and the pain was so severe. At times, it doesn't allow me to sleep at night. But as we are outside and we shouted Jesus, I felt. You felt something. Yes. That so wicked said, thing that has sat there, he must pack his load and leave this night. I felt. Hold my hand. I use this as a point of contact to every area of your body. That whatever has not been planted by my God lives your life forever. If you have problem in your eyes, God is going to heal all kinds of eye problems right now. Lay your hands there, please. I want to pray. Lay your hands. Please believe. Thank you, Jesus. When I pray for you, check yourself. And if you see a miracle, run out here. Even if you see that it has started, please don't tell lies. We are not playing gimmicks here. Some of you think it's an eye problem. But it's a demonic thing. I'm about to command it to leave you. Thank you, Jesus. Even itching in the eyes will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I command... Eyes be healed, be healed now, be healed, be healed. Every blind eye open, every blind eye open, partial blindness be gone in the name of Jesus. Long sightedness, short sightedness, glaucoma, every eye condition be healed now. Please be checking yourselves. Check yourselves. God is doing miracles now. Check yourself. If you have any growth in your body, please check yourself. As you see God touching you, come out. You, I tell you, God is healing people. If there is any growth in any part of your body, what's wrong with him? Eye problem. Bring him. God is healing people. Look at, look at a miracle. Look at a big miracle. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at what is happening to these people. Look at eyes are opening. Come on, give Jesus praise. Eyes are opening. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Every kind of eye condition. Hallelujah. We'll take the testimony. Check yourself. Don't let the devil stop you. What's, his, what's the problem with him? Look at this. Eh? 
Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. There's no time for that. What is wrong with him? This I can see. Completely. Yes. Who brought him here? His mom. We came together. With Mama. Okay, I'm going to pray for him. As I pray for him, keep testing him. When he can see you, just try him out. The Lord will heal him. Lay your hands on your no, no, let, let him lay his hands on your eyes. Lay your hands by yourself on your eyes. I command new eyes by the power of the Christ. How long has this been? Does she speak English? One year, two months. One year, two months. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, it was glaucoma. It's glaucoma. So we went to the hospital and the doctor told me that he could cure me, that she go meet any man of God to heal me. That he cannot help you. Yeah, so I'm from Zankwa in Zankong Kata, local government. So I had you, this You came program. all the way from Zankwa? Yes, sir. Oh my God. Jesus healed his eyes. Glaucoma, I command you to be gone. Bow to the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of Jesus. I command his eyes to open right now. Open right now. Please check him. Test him. See, test him. Test him. Just test him if he's seen anything. Can you say, don't be afraid. This is a factory. Just test him. Sister, stand up. What is the... Eh? You saw light. What... Are you seeing... Oh my God. Look at how this guy's eyes is so damaged. Huh? What, can you see anything? I can't see. Look the at... The only thing I saw was the light. I saw and it went you saw off. light? Yeah, when you just finished praying. So Father I just opened my eye, then he went off again. Okay, just keep looking at me. Please don't give up, all right? Get him a seat. Just keep looking at me. What happened to you? I saw a sharp light in my eye. You saw a sharp light. You see the same light again? Yes, a sharp light. You've been using glasses? I've been using glasses over two and a Who half knows years her? now. Who knows her? Ah, okay, you all know. Who is your roommate? Roommate, where are you? Come now. Roommate, when we say roommate, where are you? You come out. You know her? So that you don't come out. You see? You know why we are doing this? Because of the stupidity around the body of Christ. Some people now can think that this is stage managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we are calling the roommate. Do you know me? Eh? No, what I mean is, do I have a personal relationship with you? What happened now? Tell us the truth. I saw a sharp light in you my eyes. A and sharp I, light. I, I fell down. And then you fell under the yes. anointing. For, for two and a half years, I can't concentrate for long. I can't read for more than one hour. Tears will just start falling off my eyes. Each until is, you use glasses. Yes, until Give I Give us something glasses. to read. Something tiny. Bible. Where are all those small, small Bibles? Read Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. I'm holding your glasses. Arise and shine. For the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, give Jesus praise. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. And right now. Miracles I see miracles everywhere. You were healed? Who yes, brought this boy? Okay. Uh, How are you? Fine, sir. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let's hear the boy. Who brought him? I come alone. Alone? Yes, okay. Sir. He's old enough to respond now for himself. Is that true? Okay. What happened to you? As Please was, make sure we verify this. As I was praying from outside. Okay. Something entered me. So as, as I fell down and I'm coming. Now. I, I, I can't feel anything again. You then later, somebody hold me. Before I know, something started began working on my stomach. Something started working in your stomach. Yes, How sir. do you feel now? Was he blind? What was wrong? I Please feel check. better. You feel better. Yes, you were sir. sick. What was wrong with you? I was having stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yes, sir. Lay your hands. It must be perfected right now. Lay, hold me with one hand. You will see something moving, and that will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Who brought this small boy? I brought myself. You brought eh? I brought myself. You brought yourself. Ha! 
Could you speak English when you were his age? What's your name? My name is Victor. Your name is what? Victor. Victor. <laughs> you mean they allow little children to come on their own like this? He's, he lives around or he took transport? No, I came with my parents. Oh, you came with your parents? Yes. Oh, beautiful. What was wrong with you? My eyes was itching me. Your eyes used to itch you? Yes. And then what happened? But now I can't feel it again. You can't feel it again? <laughs> to the shame of the devil. Father, let this be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Who else? Who else? Please. Only eye conditions. Okay. Praise God. I had these itchy eyes and it's always bringing out tears. The doctor recommended glasses, but I didn't go back to the doctor. Because okay. I didn't want to use them. But there, something hit my stomach and my eyes. Where? When I was standing over when there. When you were standing there. Who saw her? Is that true? Okay. Yes, sir. So I... And it's gone. Yes. Praise the Lord to the shame of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is perfected never to return again. From the beginning of this month, I've been having this. I don't know. Every time I read, I skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know why. And it started from January. You what? I skip the word. Like when I start reading, I just skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know what happens to me what and today like yeah or something? today i was in class and my i was we were reading my friend was not asking me what's wrong with me i'm reading the word i'm mixing the word i like it started since this year and she's like okay i need glasses i'm like i don't need glasses oh when you are reading yes the, you will be skipping yes, the I'll words just keep the word, i'll go blank and i don't know why what happened to you now when we we're praying i laid my hands on my and my hands on my eye and then a light just just hit me and my hands touched Light again. You see the light? My eyes got very hot. And then Your I eyes got open. hot. Yes. And you felt it open. open. To the shame of the devil, it will never come back again. Read Isaiah 51. Just verse 1 and 2. Let's and see. And came to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hand, and to the whole of the Pit, whence ye are dig, look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone, and, and blessed, I blessed and him, blessed him, and I increased, and increased him. him. God bless you. It never returns in Jesus' name. You too. Yeah. Come. Okay. It started 2011. Um, I was having a pain in my eyes and an itch. So it's, I feel like um, each time it comes, I feel heaviness in my eyes. You feel heaviness so in your eyes. So when I went to Chica, they told me it's pterygium. That is it's mostly pterygium. That is, I'm not supposed to survive. It. That is some, it's prominent among um, old people. So and when I went, they prescribed some medications for me. I went, I went and what got right now? So but while the prayer was going on, I felt that heaviness was relieved from my eyes. It completely. Yeah. You feel any pain now? No. It's gone completely. Yeah may be perfected in the name of jesus christ i pray sweetheart how are you what's your name Mercy. we have brilliant children in koinonia thank you jesus for giving us smart children you came on your own my sister brought oh your sister brought you what was wrong with you my eyes took your eye used to eat you is he eating you now what happened when, when i was praying i put my eye you played your hand on your eyes uh-huh I saw that the thing have gone. Completely. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may it never return. In Jesus' name. All right, the last person. Okay. Sir, so my eyes sometimes used to pain me. So, uh, me and my mother we went to sick bay. They said that I needed classes. Okay. But since that day, my mother and I never went. So, sometimes I'll, my eye would be itching me. I was okay. like... Start, start feeling sleepy, but now it has gone. But now it has gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. May it never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while the worship team just leads us in a powerful session of worship, I want you to line up all the sick people, especially if you came here from outside Zaria, please, let's give you priority. Just come out quickly and then the rest join them. Please, you came with a sick person. Now is the time to he to, to, uh, to, for them to receive their healing. Very, very quickly. Please, we have a lot to do. Time is not on our side. Very quickly. Very quickly. Worship team, please help us. Hallelujah. Please bring them out quickly. 
Line them up very quickly, please. Help them. Protocol ushers, direct them. Please, let's save time inside and outside. If you are sick, whether you are outside Zaria or not, just come. Please, come out. Now is the time for you to be healed. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Those of us who are seated, begin to pray in tongues, please. My Don't be distracted. God is awesome. He can move that mountain of sickness will be moved right now. Whatever it is. Please keep coming quickly. Come and line, line yourself. As you come, just be praying and say, Lord, this is it. I am parting with this sickness. Give me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Say, my God. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. I pray for you just begin to check yourself begin to check yourself let's pace them very quickly hallelujah as I pray for you please I want you to believe I already sense the healing anointing very strong on my hands and as I pray for you you'll be healed you will be delivered no matter what it is please don't go back the same you don't have to go back the same you do not have to go back the same no matter what the issue is I want you to know that you are parting with this sickness right now Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ.
righteous. He's righteous. He's righteous. accident look at me since when i think a week ago now you can't walk the the nurse bandaged my leg then what happened i started i couldn't walk very well again so i removed the bandage why did you remove the bandage because pulse was going out pulse was going out of the leg yes where is it ah goodness look at this look at me brother yes sir look at me He's paining you now. Look at me. Just stretch the leg. Look at me. He's a demon. This is not accident. 
Thank you, Jesus. Look at everybody seeing it. I'm happy you're seeing it. Show them, please. Put it on the screen. Now let this leg be healed right now. Right now. In the name of the Christ. Can you see the guy has suddenly become relaxed? This is somebody that could not sit down. Something affected the bone in the accident. I joined this bone back. Now. Who is a witness that he really had the accident? Who knows? You saw him limping when he came. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something is happening to you. Thank you, Jesus. I fix this leg right now. Within days, this thing will dry up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Walk. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Do what you couldn't do. Just do what you couldn't do. Don't. Don't. Just do what you couldn't do. See, he's surprised. He's shocked looking at his leg. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at this. Look at what. Hold on. See the guy. What is happening to you? The leg is drying up. The leg is drying up. Drying up. You are feeling it now. Yes. Everybody, clear the way for him. Rush. Go and come back. Walk. Go and come back. Go down there and come back. Look at this guy. Could not walk. He had an accident with this leg. Come, walk as fast as you can. Walk as fast as you can. Look at the boy is crying. Look at this. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. No man can do these things except God be with you. This is not for the glory of any man. Lord, we give you praise. For that which you are doing in our midst this leg dries up in the name of jesus christ my god is awesome he can move mountains keep me in the
of them the right you've never been able to use it mm, except with age except it's an age try to move it i can move it just where is which one which of them try to move it eh? just do what i'm telling you to do try to stamp it Without this, eh? Not far. But can you walk without this? Shortly. Very short. Mm. Can you try? Right now? Sure. Do you think you can? Hold my hands. Let's try. Stand up. Look at me. If anybody supports you, if someone supports you, will you be able to walk? If nobody supports you, can you walk? You will fall. Yes. Okay, let's see. Try to walk. Come.
Just please. Hold my hands. That devil of diabetes. It's time for you to leave now. Hypertension. You are a spirit. I command you out of her life and out of her family. Mommy, be healed now. Now. Take off everything you have put in her stomach and out you go now. Now! Did you bring your prayer requests? Please start passing them quickly. Look at me. God is healing you right now. The power of God is going through your hands. You're being healed right now. Pass your last, pass the request to the last person at the side. Outside, please do the same thing. Let's save time. Everything you have written on this request will be answered in the name of Jesus. Please pass it, pass it quickly. Liver, Lord, she's totally free. You are the great and mighty God, so greatly to be praised, beautiful for all. You are the joy of the whole world. The the you world. are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful for all. Please bring the request. You quickly, are quickly. the joy of the That's whole world. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Please usher us quickly, quickly, quickly. If you don't have your request, write you one quickly. The joy of the whole Whole world. The of the world. You are the great 
Is anyone attending to those outside? Those outside, please. Let's have their request. I hope there's a way of getting the ones on, fa on Facebook and all of that. If we can't, we can just reach out to them by faith. Please make sure that you have a prayer request. God answers prayers here. Yeah. Please, everybody, rise if you can. Please, this is a very prophetic moment. Please, we'll start praying. The rest can come and join us. The other one. Pastor, please. Praise God. Listen. Please understand that this is not a religion that is done every miracle Sunday. This is done on instruction and this is biblical. The Bible says when Ezekiah was threatened, he took the threat letter before God on the altar and dropped it there. Are you getting my point? These requests have threatened the lives and the families of many of us. That's why we are bringing it before God and we are saying, Lord, if you do not step in, nothing can be done. But I want you to know that within the next five minutes or thereabout, as we begin to prophesy and lay hands on this, the angel of the Lord's presence will go to different families, different places and begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. So all you're going to do is just stretch your hands here and be praying in tongues while the worship team leads us in worship. Just keep worshiping as they pray in tongues. Is that okay? Please go ahead. You do wonders in me. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come. My God, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, O God. Lord, let impossible miracles happen. We bring this before the altar. That which threatens the Christian experience of your people. My God, I pray that every request here be turned into testimonies. Let there be deliverance, so God. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
God of all flesh, we declare Lazata Patasha, the one that parted the Red Sea, Raka Patasha, Ribizuri Brani Nekocho Shitalaba, do the impossible right now, do the impossible, do the impossible, do the impossible. You break upon the rings and you part it into two. Do the impossible right now. Behold the request of your people. Behold their heart desires. Let there, let there be miracles now. Intervene now. Intervene now. Intervene now. In the name of Jesus. We declare way where there seems to be no way right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as a, as a result of an intervention, let there be influx of testimonies. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That which was impossible with men, oh God, will they will declare. That with this request, oh God, let, the, let there be possibility right now. In the name of Jesus. Miracles. Miracles. Open doors. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your great intervention. Thank you, mighty God, for the great turnaround. Bless the name forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. We command that these requests be turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus, let there be mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, stand. Everywhere, please stand. I'm about to prophesy into our lives. Lay your hand on her chest. Out now. release her and go now hallelujah and he said to me prophesy and I prophesied as I was commanded not as I wanted I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound a rattling sound and bones began to be joined to bones and he said unto me son of man prophesy to the four winds and I prophesied O wind breathe upon the slain and the wind came and breathed upon the slain and there stood an exceeding great army I want to prophesy over your life I want you to shout amen at the top of your voice. Please believe it. Prophecy is creative. Hallelujah. Please play strings. Thank you, Father, because you always hear me when I call. Lord, as I prophesy over your people, let it not be a ritual, I pray. Nothing will happen if your power does not make it happen. Therefore, I pray that the angels that confirm the words of his messengers, may they back this word and bring it to pass. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the prophet said in Samaria, By this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, the Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. By a prophet, he brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. He says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. I'm not singing. Just concentrate. My God, would you step in and do the impossible? Do the impossible. Change the unchangeable. Change the unchangeable. My God, step in to the impossible. To the impossible. Please lift your hands. In the name that is above all names. The name that causes demons to tremble. The name that causes breakthrough and deliverance. I command right now. Let there be supernatural restoration for everything that you have lost. Restoration now. Restoration now, restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration. Everything you have lost, for whatever reason it was lost, I command restoration of opportunities in the name of Jesus. Restoration of destiny help us. Restoration of the years that the canker worm has eaten. Now, hallelujah. Every handwriting against your destiny that has said 2014 will be a year of frustration in the name that is above all names. Be cancelled now. 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 Cancel now. In the book of Job, he says. In six things will he deliver you, yea, in seven things. And one of them is the scourging tongues of men. When men sit down and make enchantment in the name of the God that I serve, every cause, every pronouncement over your life, because now, because now, because now, because now. Then the brother shall a cabaro satan about for he has broken the gates of brass and he has caught. 
the iron in sonder my god i pray every door that has been closed over your people in the name that is above all names if god be in this place i command those two leaf gates be open now be open now i prophesy be open now by the power of prophecy be open now everyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above every other name Satele kabande kretisa kaj Ashetete balakata pregede balada bagada baga Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they brought Mephibosheth a man who was not qualified but the favor of God made him to sit at table with David I pray by the favor of God wherever you need favor for jobs I prophesy receive it now receive it now from the north to the south to the east to the west I command jobs every man that has said over his dead body for you to move forward may his prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ I want to break that power that limits men every limitation every embargo that has been placed over your life that is said thus far have you come I speak from the heavens in the name of Jesus limitations be lifted now be lifted now be lifted now I command break records break records set new records do what has not been done I pray for everyone whose family member is overdue to be promoted the Bible says withhold not good from who him who is due when it is within your power to do so it is within their power to bring the promotion therefore I pray in the name that is above all names we enforce that promotion now we enforce it now everything that has died in your life hear ye the word of the Lord come alive now dead relationships come alive now I pray for your academics For he has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak the word in due season to him that is weary. He said, My tongue is the pen of the right, the ready writer. My heart has indicted a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. Daniel was made ten times better. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say that when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say for in that very hour it will be the spirit of your father speaking i pray everyone called doll i change that testimony now everyone on probation we take you out of it now we take you out of it now everyone on probation we take you out of it now every missing script every injustice done to everyone i command the angel of the lord to go to every department every faculty let justice be done in the name of jesus I 
and everyone that has vowed that you will not graduate in the name that is above all names we graduate you right here we graduate you right here in the name of jesus christ we graduate you right here that cause of hardship that is upon our families they walk like elephants and eat like ants tonight in the name that is above all names let that cause of hardship be lifted let it be lifted i speak to every job here receive increase i speak to every business here grow i command you to grow i speak to every ministry expand and break levels in the name of jesus christ let the favor of god that can mark you and distinguish you among your peers i prophesy may that mantle of favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus christ may that favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus may that favor hit you where you are may that favor change you may it cause men to bless you hallelujah and i pray may the presence of god go with you everywhere you go everyone struggling with any habit here that is not of god pornography masturbation whatever it is it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ every dead spiritual life every dead prayer life every dead word study life in the name that is above all names come alive now receive the fire for prayer take it take it take it take it take it take it the fire for prayer take it the spirit of prayer and supplication take it let it come upon you like a tornado in the name of jesus grace to pray grace to study grace to understand hallelujah every hidden gift every hidden talent every ability that can bless you that has refused to arise i pray the bible says the gift of a man makes room i pray every hidden gift that the devil has buried i prophesy let it come alive and bless you now let it come alive and bless you now Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. When I cry. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time. Thank you for lifting. 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 Thank you for lifting my head. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, I'm tired of my life. 
I'm tired of living my life the way I want. I need to surrender my life to a God that is higher and greater than me. Some of you are probably giving your heart to the Lord. Please listen. But tonight Jesus is calling. You may have a Christian name. That's not the same as salvation. You may even be a pastor. That's not the same as salvation. Tonight the Lord is calling many of you who have been living your lives your own way to relinquish that hold and surrender it completely. I'm going to make an altar call. Just one to five. I want you to run from outside, from inside. Please run like your life depends on it. You are saying, Lord, I am tired. Take it. Take it. It is yours and I'm giving it back to you. I am tired of living life my own way. I have done my best. I relinquish that whole one. Please rush quickly. Celebrate them as they come. Two. Uh -huh. Just come and as you stand here, just begin to pray. And say, Lord, take over. Take over. That's the song. God bless you. You are saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been living my life the way I want. But tonight, I'm in business with you. Four. Please don't let anybody stop you from coming. Don't let the devil say you are too far. Start running from there. Young and old. Join us. If you are coming, please keep running. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let your friend or your family member stop you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for all those coming. Thank you for that bold step. Don't let your friend stop you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how old, no matter how young, Jesus is calling you tonight. God is still speaking to you. You are saying, Jesus, take everything, take over. I'm tired of living my life my own way. I give to you. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you for coming. Don't make this an emotional decision. Mean it from the depths of your heart. No matter what you have done wrong, no matter how you've lived your life, I want you to know that there is a fountain that flows from Emmanuel's veins. And that fountain flows to bless you. It flows to wash you. It flows to cleanse you. Lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is between you and the Lord Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you. Unable to help myself. I ask you to help me. Cleanse me. Wash me. With your precious blood. I truly repent of my sins. In the name of Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit from today. No backsliding. Some of you, as you are praying this, I tell you, the power of the devil will be broken. All of the chains. You're going to say, Satan, I denounce you right now. Take your hands and live my life. I declare that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. The Lord will use me to do mighty things for his glory. I cut away from wrong associations and everything that takes your place in my life. From today, I'm sold out and totally surrendered. Now keep your hands lifted. Father, bless these ones. You have brought them, use them mightily. Let the power of sin be broken in their lives. Let the power of the grave be broken. Let the power of the flesh be broken. Anoint them and use them mightily, O oh God. Let this not be a, an emotional decision. Let this be a genuine decision. In the name of Jesus, make mighty men out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. I want you to look at me. 
I congratulate you for this great decision. Everyone here made this decision at one point. Now, I'd like you to just follow our ushers. There's a wonderful sister waving her hand. I want you to just follow them. They'll have, they'll give you some information and they'll meet with you tomorrow. God bless you. Please follow them. Follow them very quickly, please. All those worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time here at Koinonia, we love you. Please leave your seat and run out here quickly and let us pray and speak a word of blessing. God bless you. If this is your first time, wherever you are, just run and come. There is a special blessing for you. Don't wait for your neighbor. You are the first person. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you for coming. We celebrate you. We honor you. We thank you. Keep coming. Don't stop. We have a prayer for you and we have a blessing. And all those who took the pain to invite anybody here, may God invite all the blessings you need in your life. I'm very serious. I'm not just saying it. If anyone came here as a result of your invitation, I pray that my God will invite every good thing and every good person into your life in Jesus name. Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We bless you. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy upon their lives, Koinonia. Bless them. We speak the blessings of the heavens upon your life. We bless you with the blessings of the house. We bless you with prosperity. We bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit. We bless you with wisdom and revelation and understanding. We bless you with grace. We bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May you experience the life of God in a new dimension. May God plant a hunger for spiritual things in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for coming. We love you. We're always here Fridays. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. Please, you follow the ushers. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you more on our behalf. And you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Thank you very much. Celebrate them. Koinonia. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son. Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you